today we will talk about ORM. We will try to understand what ORM stands for and how it helps in uh, basically building this relationship between the object and the relational world of the things. Let's start with ORM. So you know that on in the ORM, O stands for the object side and R stands for the relational side of the things. Okay. And so let's just take an example first to appreciate and understand this. So on the relational side of the world, you know that there is a database. There might be a table out here. Let's say the table is user and there might be different rows and columns. Let's say uh, we have two columns, ID and name. Okay. How that can be represented on the object side of the world? On the object side of the world, we can say we have got class user and we have got, let's say, a representation of ID as long ID and a string as name. Okay. So the thing to understand here is that on the relational side of the world, you have a way of representing, you have a way of capturing the data, which is in the form of rows and columns. Whereas on the object side of the world, it is in the form of objects. And then where ORM, uh, they come into picture. So the ORMs, what they do is that they basically help in mapping that one. What does that mean? It means that the data that is sitting on the relational side of the world in the tables will be available to you on the object side of the world as an object. Okay. So here a row of user, a row of data in the user table would be available to as a object of type user here. And you can do some operations to it and you can ask it to persist it back or update it back on the database. And this framework will take care of making sure that this transformation from one world to the another world happens seamlessly. The other uh, common uh, way of representing M is also known as mismatch. What does that mean? It means that there is a mismatch between object world and the relational world and the OR frameworks basically help in bridging that mismatch and giving you a transparent way of dealing it in their individual worlds. In the relational world, you deal with them as tables and columns and rows. In the object world, you deal with them as class and users. Okay. Okay, let's uh, take a simple example uh, to understand this notion of mapping and then we can look into the other concept, uh, concepts where we will see into how the mismatch happens and then how the mapping uh, will help out uh, in basically dealing with those mismatches. Okay, so let's say that on the uh, relational side of the things, we have a table, let's say user, and it has two columns. ID and name and let's say it has two data points, two rows basically, 101 the name as Ikagra and 102 as Ishna. So the question is that how would you want to deal with this data on the object side of the things and that is what is very important to understand. So what you would really want is that let's say we have a class user and it has like Two attributes, string, name, which we just saw some time before this. But now what you want is basically when you are dealing with the user with ID 101, you basically want to deal with let's say one user object U1 whose ID is 101 and name is a card. Okay. And same goes with user U2 id will be 102 and name will be ishna okay so understand this thing you have a row on the relational side of the world and you have converted it into an object with a different data point being set into different attributes of that object now you can do any operations on this object 
for example, you can change the name of the things. Usually we don't change IDs, uh, but you can change the name of the user and then you persist it. But when you persist it, what would happen? You have, you have, you have a handle of your object. But when you persist it, you want an update query to go inside the database. And that's where this object relational mapping comes into picture. So they will take care of basically uh, taking this object and uh, converting it into the right SQL and persisting it into the database. And how do we do that one? Usually, you, there, so there are different ways of doing that one. But normally what you do is that you put some relationships, for example, let's say you say entity in the case of like JP or Hibernate world and you tell that which table it is mapped to. So you'll say that this entity is mapped to this table and inside that entity this ID is mapped to this column and this name is mapped to this name here. Uh, you would have, if you have worked with Hibernate or any other Warren framework, you would have seen a similar kind of concepts out here. But what is more important to understand here is this whole notion of mapping that there is a data sitting on the relational side of the world in rows and columns and there are the same data pieces available to you as the objects on this side of the things. Okay, let's look into some more conceptual mismatches that happen on both the worlds. We will not look into how you fix all of them, but we will just bring out those mismatches and uh, that will give you an appreciation that the, how important this whole ORM frameworks come into picture. So the next one, let's talk about uh, something called as inheritance and polymorphism. Okay, so it's very common. One of the fundamental concepts on the object side of the world. You might have a user and it in so and then there could be customer and then there could be employee who are inheriting the user class. Okay. But is there a concept of inheritance on re relational side? No, there is none. Correct? Same thing goes with you might work with the handle of the user, but the underlying object might be employee. Okay, so it might behave like an employee or it might behave like a customer based on the underlying uh, concrete implementation of that object, which also goes by the name polymorphism. Is it, does it exist in the relational world? No. Okay, so in uh, the, the simple databases that we work with, these concepts doesn't exist and they are not uh, a natural concept for that world as well. There are some object based databases, but they're highly proprietary. Let's not get into that. But the more popular SQL based RDBMS databases, these concepts are not supported out there. What is supported? All the data in the form of tables. Okay. So that's what ORM would do. Okay. What it will do is that it will map these different data points on the, the to the different kind of table structures that you would put on the relational side and make sure that that mapping works seamlessly. It will also uh, take care of things like when you want to fetch users, it will fetch customers and employees. But if you want to fetch customer, it will only fetch customers. So all those things are possible. I will not get into how to do these things. I have certain videos also which you can check out on these concepts of how to handle inheritance polymorphism. But the more important idea I want to bring here is that there is a conceptual mismatch happening in terms of concepts and that's where the ORM framework comes and they basically help you out in mapping these things. Okay, now let's get into a couple of other things. Now let's talk about something called as granularity. Okay, granularity, what does that mean? For example, let's say in the user side, you have a table which is like ID, name and city. Okay, but on the Java side or on the object oriented side, you might want to make it like one class user with ID and name, but you want to map city in a different class. Okay, so you see there is a granularity mismatch now. 
all the data points here are sitting together but here you want to break them up whatever your region could be uh, basically to have a more rich domain domain model or whatever but there is a mismatch out here okay and it can happen the other way around also you might have a user table here and you might want to put this address as a different table called city okay and then you might want this city to go here so all these kind of granularity differences you would see on both side of the world and then with the help of ORM you should be able to seamlessly work with this mismatches on this side they will automatically get mapped to your user and addresses object and while persisting if it is one table it will take care of like persisting it accordingly so this is where the granularity mismatch comes into picture now let's talk about something called as association okay So here we break the user and address, but we still need to make a relationship, correct? So either we can say that uh, for this, uh, let's simply keep it like a one-to-one -one relationship. So it means that one user is uh, just connected to one address. So you can either do like this, that you can either make an address FK here. Okay, let just for this one, let's put uh, one ID also here. So you can put an address FK here. And then based on the address FK, you know that which address this user uh, has or you can put an user FK here. That way you know that this address belongs to which user. But the point to note here is that whether you put it here or you put it here, you can reach to both of them. Okay, it's a matter of how you write the query. But what is the more important thing to understand is that there is no notion of directionality on this side of the things okay how do you do on the user side okay so if you need an address you really need to put a handle here okay and if you put a handle here it doesn't mean that you get a handle in the address object automatically if you need a user handle here you have to go and put a user handle here okay so there is a very strong sense of directionality here Okay, that directionality doesn't exist on the relational side of the things, but this directionality exists on the object side of the things. And that also creates a mismatch and that's where your ORM frameworks will come into picture and help you out in seamlessly handling this uh, notion of direction. Now let's talk about something known as identity and equality, which is also a very important notion. So for example, Let's say that on the relational side of the things, you again have a user. We have ID, name, and let's say there is one data point. 101, Ekagra. Okay. Now, on the object side of the things, you can fetch this object. Let's say user. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, let's say just for simplicity, let's say that there are two threads running now. T1 and T2. And in this, you fetch this object as ut1 and in this, you fetch this as ut2. Okay, now both the objects are representing the same row in the database. 101 and same name Ekagra here. Okay, same goes here. Okay, now what would happen if you change something here? or you change in both of them and you persist them, then who wins? Which data will get persisted? So all these things will, the ORM uh, basically will help you out in terms of like there are persistent, uh, there are pessimistic, optimistic locking notions and all those things. But again, we'll not get into the details of how to handle them. What is more important to understand that you might have a more than one representation of a row out here. And then you need to be careful about their identity and their equality as well. Because when someone uh, may be in some other place where you get all these objects from both these threads and you want to compare them, they are basically representing the same object and that notion you have to handle uh, properly. Okay, so that's where this whole identity and equality notion comes into picture. And uh, understand that databases are like, uh, so, uh, databases are the central repository of the data. So it so happens many times that more than one applications are dealing with those databases. So this whole notion of uh, uh, 
uh, this identity and equality actually is a broader concept but again uh, what is more important in those cases is all your like who wins kind of scenarios okay but yes here what we want to focus on that there is this notion you have to be clear of your row might be represented with more than object on your application side of the object oriented models okay and then and then uh, I'll, then let's talk about briefly about the type systems these are not like I would say a mismatch kind of notion even if you're dealing with JDBC or any other thing you have to deal with them but the, I thought that I think it's good to even point out these things the type systems so you might have here on this uh, relational side of the things you might have a different like int uh, integer and all those notions how they map to the types here same thing goes with your dates times and uh, on top of that uh, some uh, ORM uh, uh, frameworks also give the capability to define custom types and then they can be mapped accordingly on the relational database side of the things okay so yeah I guess uh, these are the conceptual things that I wanted to bring out uh, in this video understand that these are the conceptual differences that's why ORM is also known as object relational mismatch but what ORM frameworks does is that they help in mapping those mismatches and helping you in transparently dealing with the concepts which makes more sense in which side of the world you are working with okay so having this understanding I think you'll get a much better understanding of how to deal with ORM system and what to expect out of them and how to handle those mismatches as well based on how that ORM system handles those mismatches. Okay, thank you very much.